Hi everyone, welcome back. I know it's been a while, um, but welcome back. Today I'm going to be going through how I have been implementing Tana's new calendar feature into my workspace. I have four main or primary uses that I've been, or four areas that I've been using it in within my workspace that I'm going to be sharing with you today. The first is my task or task management area. Then I have my content creation area. I also have the calendar view implemented inside of my time capsule, which is where I store memorable moments from the over the years. And lastly, I have a sort of a niche um, example, which is where I track my UFC events. So the first thing that I want to do is actually show you from the UFC events tracking area because I don't currently have calendar view set up there. So I want to show that to anyone who is new to Tana or hasn't implemented the calendar view yet, or maybe you're just looking on YouTube for uh, different ways that you can use calendar view um, if this is your first time. So I'm going to have that at the beginning and then I'll go through how I've kind of changed up my task management workflow and my content creation workflow to have it work better with calendar view. Uh, so let's jump right in and begin in the UFC tracking area. So this is a bit of a niche area. Um, I'm pretty sure that most people don't track UFC events inside of Tana, uh, but it is something that I do just so that I can have my notes and everything in one space. So as you can see, this is a uh, this is a search node and it's pretty much bringing up everything that I have uh, tagged as UFC event, which is the super tag. And um, it's pulling up everything that's within the year of 2023. Um, I'm using the greater than and lesser than search operators to do that. Uh, so the period between these dates is essentially all of 2023. So that's what it's going to pull up, right? Uh, so that's what you're seeing here. Everything is viewed currently as cards, but once you have a super tag, which has a date field, such as the UFC event super tag, you can use the calendar view. So I'm going to come across to view and click calendar. And voila, here we have everything um, in this beautiful calendar view. Uh, so you can see here on the right uh, from the 8th, which was last Saturday, um, UFC 287 happened. And that's here. If I go to the back button, which is right next to the today button, I can see all of the events that would have happened in March. So let's go back to the today view or to this month, the this month view, and let's have a closer look at the different ways that we can customize this calendar view. So you can use date fields or you can select the date field that you want. So let's say that this UFC super tag had more than one date field. This is going to allow me to select the one that I want to use in this calendar view. For, this, for the purposes of this example, there's just one date field, so I don't have to configure anything there. The day length really comes into play if we go to the week view. So what I'm going to do before I get into that is I'm just going to add two events. So let's go across to me. I know that UFC 288 is supposed to be on the 6th of May. So I'm just going to come in and type in UFC 288 on the 6th of May. And I also know that we have another event, which is UFC 289, and that's supposed to be on the 10th of June. So I can come in here and type UFC 289, which I'm really looking forward to. But anyways, coming back. So I've added in another event and let's say I want to sort of see this in terms of the week view. So I'm going to click on week and I'm going to just go to where that event would be. And uh, right here we are. 
once you add an event up on the top in the month view, it's going to automatically have it be in the all D section. So because you're not already or you're not directly adding in a time block for this event, um, it's going to automatically go to all day as default. But let's say I know the times for UFC 288. This is where the day length can come into play. Uh, the day length is going to allow me to configure the start of the day as well as the end of the day, just like in any other calendar that you may be used to using. So I'm going to come up to day length and let's say I want my day to start at, yeah, I want my day to start at 5 a.m. And I want it to end, let's say, 10. And that way we can have, a, we can kind of configure this, this span. So let me make it, let me choose another example so you see it a bit clearer. Let's say um, 2 o'clock we can see that it goes up until 1 p.m. and this would be the 2 p.m. Um, line here. So that's how you can adjust the day length in your calendar view. But I like to have as much space as I can. So let's say that UFC 288 starts at, uh, usually starts pretty late, uh, depending on if you watch the prelims or not, but let's say it starts at 5 p.m. I can drag, just as with another calendar, it's so beautiful, I can drag this down, uh, let's say it ends at 11 p.m. If you watch UFC, you know it never does, um, but I, I mean at least depending on which time zone that you're in. But anyways, I digress. You can drag and resize this to whatever it is that you want for this time block, which is amazing. We can also have a look at this in the day view. Um, so the only thing is I'm going to have to go to that day, which was May 6th. And here we can see. And I, of course, I can adjust here as well. So that's showing you the main functionality. If I want to see, let me drag this up just for visibility purposes. And let's say I want to um, not see certain things okay it seems like the these actually don't I'm gonna skip that out <laughs> all righty so uh, that is how let's go back to month and that's how easy it is you can see everything in terms of all of your events and uh, i can still see all of my cards with all of the events that i would have watched from the start and of course, I can come in and add my poster and the rest of the details for any additional events. So those are the basics of calendar view inside of Tana. Let's jump into how I use this in my time capsule, right? Um, going across to my time capsule. And here we are. So my time capsule is just what I call the area of my workspace where I keep memorable moments and any sort of highlights of my month, my year, so that I can go back through. If I go to my gallery, I can come here and I can see all of the events from the day that I would have started to input these memorable moments. And I can see everything for this year only. And that's the purpose of my that's the purpose of the time capsule as far as I have it. So it really just consists of this one nice and simple super tag, which is the moment super tag. I can add photos, you know, I can add. Um, and of course, it has a date property, which means that I can go ahead and make this into a calendar as well. Right. So let's say I wanted to view this. Let me just close this node Let's say I want to view this as a calendar and boom we have a calendar where i can see all of the events based on month i also have my journal in my time capsule you know it's kind of similar capturing journal entries capturing moments these sort of things uh, so i can easily come in here it's going to use the calendar day uh, date from whichever day that i'm actually typing on 
and this will be entry 13. The entries are actually within the node. I just kind of put numbers on them because I'm recording this video, um, right? But that's how easy it is. I usually type my actual journal entry right here and it just tags as, as journal if you want to configure more add a photo or anything else the calendar view actually negates the purpose of this year field i don't need that anymore now that i have calendar view um so that is how i use it in my time capsule but let's have a look at my planner which i have uh, pinned inside of my day tag inside of tana so inside of the planner i have uh, this kind of workflow that i am still currently working with tweaking and trying to streamline but i try to have it so that uh, i start at the beginning of let's say the month where i'm adding in my events then i am brainstorming and kind of putting together whatever tasks i need to get done um, which is just more like a brain dump of all of my tasks. And then I go to next up task where I highlight or move across the task in my queue or in my inbox and bring that across to next up task so that I know what I'm working on the current week. And then at the end of the week, I can come in here and archive all of those tasks. So if you saw my previous task management video, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, but anyways, this is how uh, the calendar view is being used here. So I have my events and you can see here, schedule upcoming and pending events. Uh, so I can go, I already did this. I went in and I added in all of the events that I have coming up for the month of April. And this is just showing me everything that has an event and everything which status or whose status is essentially not archived. So I do have an archive here. You can also use the not property. Um, so by clicking not and just choosing archive and the status, but I decided to go the long route because I didn't really know that that was an, um, didn't really know that that was an option. So here we are. But anyways, that's the search expression. And what I like about this is that in the calendar view, Tana shows you nodes with no dates and it shows you how many nodes that you have with no dates. So if I click this here, I can say, OK, these are all of the things that I don't have scheduled. I don't have a date or so I don't have scheduled. And let's say I wanted to do this um, on this day. I can easily drag this in here and um, move along with my day. So that's really nice. I'm not sure if I can drag it back out. No, maybe I'll have to undo. Yeah, so if I undo, it goes back to um, this nice little area, which is kind of like a almost like a reminder for any events that you kind of may need to schedule, but you don't. Um, or you're putting off or anything like that. So this is a nice reminders area inside of the calendar view. Um, so that's it really for events. I just add in the events for the month. I have my task inbox, which is where I brain dump and put all the tasks that I, anything that comes to mind that's a task, I put it here. Uh, the next up task, which as you can see here, move tasks from my key to the next up so that I can work on them this week. And then I have my weekly schedule in which I am using the week um, feature of the calendar. And this is where I can come in and time block any events, tasks, or projects that I have, as you can see here, that I have and that I want to get done for the upcoming week. And lastly, I have my weekly schedule, which is where I would come in and literally highlight all of these, go to my command bar with command K, and then change the status, set the status to archive, and they will all disappear from here. Uh, so that is... Uh, the workflow that I'm currently kind of working through. I don't have it perfectly yet, but when I do, I will definitely do a video on it so that you can have the um, template and that you can utilize it as well. So that's how I'm utilizing it in Planner. And lastly, in my content area, so the same kind of thing where I'm trying to have a workflow, but also have things functional. 
right? So I can see any projects that I have um, coming up here, which includes things. So my content includes things like um, YouTube videos, which I call as projects, newsletters, tweets, all of these things. Um, I can see all of my projects here in the list view. This remains the same from the last video. Um, newsletters, I also have tweets, um, ideas, and and some other things which I'm kind of playing around with the planning area as well. But as you can see, it's not as streamlined. I still have this duty, which I no longer needed thanks to the calendar view. Uh, so yeah, when I have this better streamlined, I'll share with you. But uh, the purposes of this video was just to show you how I'm currently using it and uh, how you can implement it as well in your own workflows. I mean, this can go from very, very simple. And I think that's what the calendar view really helped on or is providing Tana users with simplicity of being able to just come in, uh, time block your day, add your tasks to the month, all of these things are now possible with calendar view. So I hope you enjoyed the video and um, I will see you guys next week. Please bear with me as I'm trying to work through my desk setup, uh, my room setup and everything for recording videos. If you only saw what I'm currently working with right now, but hopefully the audio is better. I know that a lot of people were, or a few people were saying that the audio if you were listening with headphones especially it was only coming through the left channel so that should be fixed now with uh, the fact that i'm using this microphone um but anyways that's where we are at currently and i will see you guys hopefully next week